Oof, it is Friday, February 17th, and we have a lot to talk about with these interest rates. We've seen quite a bit of movement over the last week, so I'm going to go over that. But I'm also going to, going to explain what the heck was just announced from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are basically the rulers for all mortgage lenders, your Chase's, your Wells Fargo's, us, where we get our money and how we lend our money to consumers. They assess certain risk tolerances, and that's what every lender has to abide by when we're presenting rates to clients. And they are making big changes, and they don't make a lot of sense. So it's important for you to know because you might hear some griping about, well, why is my interest rate higher? I have an 800 FICO score and 20% down. What is going on? This video is going to explain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through what these loan level pricing adjustments are, how they impact you and your clients, and what solutions we have, and then some good news for some first time home buyers and some strategies. So let's jump in. All right, what the heck are these LLPAs or what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are talking about that they're making big changes to? LLPA stand for Loan Level Price Assessment. Basically, after the housing crash, the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac said, you know what, we need to have a sort of like recipe that we use that's consistent so that when we lend money to the banks and then the banks lend money to the consumer that everybody has the same adjustment based on risk risk tolerance so think about it when you go in to get like your life insurance test and you have the nurse come to you and they take your blood and they ask you how much you weigh and they ask if you're a smoker or if you chew tobacco or how many drinks you have they're asking you those questions because they're trying to figure out how risky of a client are you going to be to offer life insurance to you? That's what LLPAs are, but for mortgages. So it looks at actually 30 different components, things like what's your credit score? What's the credit history look like? How much of the home are you financing versus your down payment? What type of home is it? Is it a primary, second home, investment property? They deem a second home an investment property higher risk because if you were to default on a mortgage, it's probably gonna be one of those versus your primary. Is it a condo or single family home? Literally there's 30 different components, but the biggest two of course are the FICO score and the down payment. So I'm going to show you the changes that are being made. And the reason why you need to know this is because they don't make a lot of sense. Meaning you would think an 800 FICO score and 20% down is gonna get the lowest rate adjustment because that's pretty low risk, right? That would make like logical sense. But no, Fannie and Freddie are just quite frankly not being super logical right now. So hopefully in the next few months, it's going to be like this for a while. I would expect it to be like this for most of the year, but they do these reassessments and hopefully enough people are like, this makes no sense and it shouldn't be like this. So what you need to know is who does it impact? Well, Fannie and Freddie are only backed for conventional mortgages. So people who are getting a conventional mortgage loan, this is who this impacts. People who are getting an FHA, VA, or USDA, those are not backed by Fannie and Freddie, they're backed by Jenny. So that doesn't impact them. And even though this goes into effect May 1st, banks and lenders have already put it into their pricing because if you go out and you find a home or if you're shopping for a home and we pre-qualify you for a home, but you don't end up closing until May 1st, then the banks get hit with this adjustment and they didn't charge the consumer for it. So most banks are already adopting to these rates. And this is the stuff that you don't see on the news and behind the curtain. So what is going on with these LLPAs? Well, let me take, let me show you guys. These are just two examples. You've got the FICO score listed here and you've got the percent that you're financing on the top. So we think about down payment like 5% down. 5% down means you're financing 95% of the home's worth. So if you had a 780 FICO score and you're financing 95%, you are going to get a rate adjustment of 0.625. Every lender, when they present you rates, already baked into that rate is this adjustment based on your risk tolerance. If you have a 700 FICO score and you're putting 20% down, you would be in this column here because you're financing 80% and you would actually have a credit. So you wouldn't be charged an ass assessment, you're deemed less risky. That's what that negative sign is. So this is what's interesting. 
if we were to look at the old chart versus the new chart based on just these two factors, what's crazy is that we didn't even have these top two, two tiers here. So before, if you had a 740 or above, you were in the top tier of credit. Well, now they've added two tiers. So now the top tier has changed and you have to be at a 780. That means if you're at a 760, you're in tier two. If you're in a 740, you're now in tier three. So here's where this impacts us and where this doesn't make sense is now there are lower, this everything here in green, there are lower adjustments. So a lower interest rate would be offered to somebody putting 5% down with a 780 FICO score than it was on the old chart. So now these people actually are getting better interest rates than before. But the people here in orange and red are getting worse rates than before this change. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because look, this these people all have great credit in here. They're putting either between five to like almost 20%. Like why would they be getting worse? And that's kind of where every lender is scratching their head right now. And sometimes when Fannie and Freddie gets involved, they do things that don't really make a whole lot of logical sense. But it is important for you guys to know this because what I see is a lot of consumers and even real estate agents typically go to a website called Mortgage Daily and they're looking at interest rates. And it's not a bad website, but let me just walk you through this. You go to mortgage rates and you're like, okay, the 30 year fixed rate is around 6.75 or 6.78, 15 years, 5.94. But here's the million dollar question. What adjustments are they using to average this? Are they using one that is looking at a 780 FICO score or are they looking at one that's a single family home versus a condo? What's this based off of? And then if you scroll down to the very bottom, which is what most people do, what they don't do, look how drastically different this is. So Mortgage News Daily is reporting their 30 year at 6.78. Freddie Mac is reporting at 6.32. And then the Mortgage Banker Association is pointing at 6.39 and they all claim, and look, here's points. So this one has points there, which means the more you pay points, the lower the rate is. It's a little bit deceiving, but this is why advertised interest rates don't tell you the full story because you're not looking at all of the loan level price adjustments. And guys, all you have to do is come here to Google, type in LLPA, Fannie Mae. This is all public information, Fannie Mae. Here it is, this first one listed, it's loan level pricing adjustments. This is probably super nerdy, but it's really cool to me. So here's the new chart showing the FICO score. So now the 740 or, or is a third tier. Here's the amount that you're financing. Now take a look at this bad boy. What if it's an investment property or a condo or a second home or your manufactured home? Look at these adjustments. So on a investment property or a second home now, it's a 3.375 rate adjustment with 20% down. And it's a lot less if you put 25% down. And so if you ask, well, what's the, what's the minimum down payment on an investment property? Well, it's 20%, but holy smokes, that interest rate is going to be ugly, but that's an added adjustment versus if you were buying a primary home, putting 20% down, you're not going to have that same level of adjustment. And this again is coming right from the banks. The other big difference that they added is this debt to income ratio. So now if your debt to income ratio is over 40%, now there's another rate adjustment. And a lot of people have adjustments over, I'm sorry, have debt to income ratios over 40%. So just to walk you through this, if they were, a uh, uh, 40% or 43%, we'd have to add 0.375. And let's say they were putting 5% down, we'd have to add this 0.125. That's just coming strictly. That's the fee that goes to Fannie Mae. And then what we do is shop the rates where we're shopping. Who's going to offer this loan for the cheapest? Wells Fargo, Chase, like what's their servicing fee? And that's what we're shopping. But we know this is baked into the rates from every lender based on these public adjustments. The other thing that they added, um, so this wasn't there before this new change. They didn't care if you had a 48%. Now there's this added adjustment. Even if you put 
30% down. If your FICO, if your debt to income ratio is over 40%, you're going to have that adjustment. And guess what, guys? Do you see that adjustment here? Nope. This is kind of like going to Zillow and looking up what the property value is for your home. It doesn't tell the whole story. Did you update the house recently? You know, it, it just, it doesn't tell the whole story. So let's go back to this. Um, there's also people who take out a second mortgage. So if someone buys a home at 900,000, they only want to put 5% down. That's get entering into jumbo territory. The lender has to split the financing up into two mortgages. Now you have a first lien and a second lien. Look at these adjustments. Woo! 0.625. So people who take out second liens right now, the rate is a lot harder. Why do you higher? Why do you need to know this? Well, if you're a real estate agent or you're a sales rep with a builder, you might hear gripings that your interest that their interest rate seems high based on what they're seeing on bankrate.com or mortgagesdaily.com. And you might even be like sitting at the closing table like, "Huh, this rate seems high." Well, did they do two loans? Did they is it a second home or investment property? Now you can at least be more equipped to say, "Oh yeah, this year they did make some changes when it comes to Fannie and Freddie and you don't need to divulge all of this, but this is the why. It's because the this is what's not advertised online and it's specific to every single client. So sometimes a real estate agent will say, "Well, what's the average interest rates right now?" And it's so hard to answer that because it's like, "Well, What's the FICO score? <laughs> How much are they financing? You know, it can truly vary from client to client, but the biggest factor that causes rates to go up and down is not even this. It's what's going on with the bond market. And that's what I wanted to end with today. Um, for your interest rate update and for our monthly market update, you guys know that I'm constantly monitoring the bond market. And the reason for that is because when the demand for mortgage bonds is high, it means investors are buying more mortgages versus like putting it into stops and it causes interest rates to come down. This is a two year look back. So on the left hand side, you can see this black box. You can see that this is in the 2021. The demand was really high. Interest rates were really low. We were loving life. And then boom, November 2021 hit. And we can see a pretty steady downward slope in the demand for mortgage bonds, which is why we heard all over the news that mortgage rates are up. A lot of people thought that it was the federal funds rate causing it, but that's not really the case. It's the demand for mortgage bonds, and it's largely based on how the economy is performing and inflation. But if you see here, the lowest point on this chart was October. That means that last year, the highest point, their highest interest rate was this October time period. If anybody bought a home in that time period, they're probably getting the itch to look at a refinance because interest rates were well above 7%. We've recovered quite a bit. This little pretty large increase here, that was due to the CPI numbers, inflation coming out, um, interest rates, the fixed follow inflation. And so we saw a pretty good increase in this line, which is when we got excited and heard rates were coming down. But then February 2nd, we see this downward slope again and rates have come uh, back up. And again, a lot of this is because the economy is doing better. Um, the jobs report came out and it was better than what we were expecting. And so we, we think that this is going to turn around because again, when the, the in inflation numbers come out every single month, it is going to help improve, but it's going to be slow and it's going to be a roller coaster. And so sometimes we'll hear on the news like, oh, interest rates got better today. Well, better compared to what? Better compared to the day before? better compared to here because they didn't get better. If you were looking in February 2nd, that news doesn't really relate to you because anything after February 2nd, if in the news that says rates got better in your eyes, they haven't gotten better to where you saw them back in really all of January. So that's where the news can be a little bit deceitful, which is why every single week I do an interest rate update on my Instagram. It's so, so important that you're following someone that studies this kind of stuff and not really news propaganda because you don't want to get false information or get your hopes up or get saddened either way. The good news is, is that this real estate market is heating up. It's already getting back to a multiple offer situation. And we think that that's because a lot of the people who sat on the sidelines last year when interest rates got to that 7% mark, they were like, you know what, we're going to wait. And now they're getting the itch. They're like, okay, 
we have been renting, we're ready, like rates are below 7%. We understand that we're not stuck with this loan. We will likely rewrite the loan. And so let's get into the house now because we're tired of our rent going up or we need to downsize. It is, I'm telling you, we are getting about 10 contracts a week right now and it's back to multiple offers. You still get some wiggle room. I'd say there's a small window um, and ask your real estate agent because every house is different, but we are still seeing a pretty good amount of seller concessions. So I've got a video um, online that talks about what you can utilize the seller concession for or a builder concession, how you can get a really low interest rate for the first few years, which is beneficial when the economists are predicting that there's going, you know, rates are going to go back to the fours. Um, it's probably going to take 18 to 20 months, but you can leverage a seller credit get your monthly payment lowered, get into that home, and then rewrite your mortgage. And just remember, we offer all of our clients, when they write a loan with us, we will do a rewrite for them. And that means no lender fees, zero out of pocket, and we will keep them in the same term. That's a good leveraging point when you're talking to real estate agent, or I'm sorry, to clients, when they're thinking of selling and buying and they're worried, they may have gotten screwed on their last refinance. And so they associate it with super, super expensive spoke to a client and they were like, I paid $9,000 for my last refinance. I'm like, what? And so when rates come down, there's a ton of spam calls and a ton of junk mail. And that's unfortunately what happens is they fall for it. They fall for that advertised rate and they don't realize what's embedded in that rate. So when in doubt, contact myself, contact the nerds, our post-closing customer service team literally does that every single month. We're evaluating the equity of the home and the interest rate and even the homeowner's insurance because good Lord insurance has gone through the roof. But just know our team consists of customer service before they find a home, during, and we have a whole thing that we do after that we don't do a good job talking enough about. But holy smokes, very long video, longer than normal. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned next week. We are having some really great classes and I'll keep you updated on the agenda and what they are. Thank you.